All right, guys, now that we're working on the wing, you can see how this all goes together. They do use a couple of the four to be exact. I think these are carbon fiber or maybe fiberglass rods and a couple of aluminum joiners here in the middle. On top of that, they do include in the kit a wing stiffener. Now this is a plastic piece that would sit right about here in the middle of the wing and just provide a little more stiffness and rigidity to it. Now, you, as you've probably already guessed, I've modified the instructions quite a bit as I've gone through this build. And this is one of the things I do eliminate. I don't use it. It is up to you if you want to use it. Um, the reason I don't is because this is a tail only plane. What I mean is that we only have rudder control for turning. And if you use the wing stiffener, and I have in the past, I found that it limits the dihedral of the wings, which is this curve here. That's called dihedral. And on a plane that flies with only rudder, the more dihedral you have, the more maneuverable it's going to be. So that wing stiffener tend to limit it too much, and I didn't like how it handled in windy conditions. It became kind of unresponsive. So again, up to you. You can fly without it, add it later, try it, rip it off. Really your call. Um, I've just liked it better in the past not to have it on there. And I found that these rods and stiffeners do just fine keeping the wing uh, stable and rigid. So again, your call there. But either way, these have to be applied, so let me show you how this goes. I've already taken the liberty of doing the first three. So you have one here, one here, and there's one back here. And all they use is this clear tape again that comes in the decal sheet for applying it. Now what I do, is I've got the end of the wing propped up on a box to help hold that dihedral shape for me so I'm not fighting it. We can take our last tube, stick it into the joiner, like so, grab your piece of tape, And we're going to be folding this over so you don't want to put it all on the top side. I'm going to put maybe quarter inch, three eighths on the top side, just on the wing. I haven't attached it to the rod yet. And then I want to make sure I got the rod pressed up against the trailing edge of the wing here, all the way against the foam, so that we got the maximum strength. If there's a space between the rod and the wing, it's not really doing much. There's going to be too much flex. So this is something that's going to fight you a little bit, but all you got to do is get it started. Once the tape is on the rod, it kind of holds it in place. So there we go. I got the tape touching the rod now. I can take this, I can fold the tape over the back side. And you want to start in the middle and just work it to the ends. There'll be a few little creases, which is just fine. As long as you got a nice solid piece on there, you'll be good. So. You can kind of see our tape now, get it in the light for you. There you go, like so, top and bottom. And that's what holds this wing rigid. Now, I'm trying to flex it. It's pretty rigid. I like that amount of flex to it, because again, the more flex you get, the more steering control you have. Again, there's a limitation to that, but I found that in the past, this configuration works really well. You can fly it in a lot of wind, a good control authority over it. So that's my preference. So there's the wing build, and that's all there is to it. Again, now if you wanted to put the stiffener in the middle here, you could. I'm choosing not to. So we're done with the wings. That's the airframe for this video. Now again, as you noticed, I have modified the instructions a little bit. I haven't used the, they have some back plates that they tend to want you to bolt onto the tail here with screws going through it. I didn't do any of that because this leaves room for any way you'd like to mount it. So what I do personally, is I run a piece of carbon fiber on the leading edge here to stiffen it up and one up the rudder if I know that this plane is going to be carrying a load. But the CA glue right to the foam and carbon fiber has been plenty strong. I never needed to bolt through. And it makes it for a simpler repair. Once you have those plates on there or screws in it, it really gets kind of messy when you crash. Um, ask me how I know that. <laughs> so that's my airframe build for now. In the next video, I'm going to install all the electronics on the airframe and show you guys how to set that up. And then in a third video, I'll show you how to program the electronics onto the remote itself. So let me piece this all together so it kind of looks like a plane. I'll give you one final shot and we'll move on to the next video. So here we have it, guys. So this is the fully assembled airframe, you know, minus a few components, of course. But this is how she should look when you got her all set. There's not much to these planes. You can see all our plastic parts on the bottom side, our tail. I got the landing gear installed now, front end tail wheel. And that's really it. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install the electronics properly. And then on the video after that, we'll go ahead and show you how to program those electronics to make sure that you have everything moving the right direction, have the right kind of throw. That all these things will make sure that your first flight is a successful one. So thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you real soon. 
Hey guys, Brandon here for RC Nightmare. In this video, this will be part two of our airplane build tutorial. I'm going to show you how to install your electronics, your push rods, get it all set up so it's ready for programming on the radio. Now I've already gone ahead and installed everything off camera because honestly, the action of actually doing it is quite boring and time consuming. So I did it ahead of time and I'm just going to run you through all the pointers, tips and tricks so you can kind of understand how to do this yourself. I'm going to start at the tail of the plane. You can see now that I've gone ahead and installed my control horns. And with these type of control horns, we do have a small clip on the back side that holds it in place. You can see right here, there's a small clip that pinches that control horn through the foam. Now, I'm not too happy with that, so I go ahead and actually put a little bead of glue around the, the, uh, the control horn itself to help stiffen that up. I did the same thing on the horizontal stabilizer. You can see here control horn and on the back side there's the little clip that pinches it through the foam. So you see those are in and again I glue those in place stiffens it up a little bit really just using foam to hold it in place it's quite loose so it doesn't work out too well. We also you can see we have the push rods installed and all you have to do for these push rods is install a small or bend a small what we call L bend in the side of it and I'm giving you the close-up shot here so you can see it and there's a small clip included with the kit that holds it in. And now in terms of where you put it and what hole position, you can see I have it on the second, or I'm sorry, that would be the first hole out, right? No, the second hole, I'm sorry. Second hole out from the inside. The farther in you go, the more control you, or the more deflection you'll get on the rudder. The farther out you go, the less you'll get. I've gone there, again, this is something you can really mess with, and you might choose to put it in a, a, full, a hole farther away. Just kind of play with it. That's, this is where I like it for the amount of throw I want when I'm flying. So you can see the push rods go up through the push rod keeper, whatever you want to call this thing, a stabilizer. It helps hold it in place so they don't flex. They also go through the bottom of the rear wing mount. You can see here, right through, and to the servos. Now on to the servos. When you're installing these bad boys, you want to make sure that you have the servo horn, that's the little arm coming off the servo, as close to a perfect 90 degree angle with the servo. So let me show you what I mean. This horn here is at almost perfect 90. If I bring in our fancy little 90 degree tool I used in the previous video, you can see the horn is 90 degrees to the servo. Same with the other one, it's a little off, but it's as close as we're gonna get it right now. And the reason you wanna do that is because if you had it sitting, let's say like that when you installed it, you're losing throw. When you go this way, you're only gonna have a little bit of throw. When you go this way, you'll have a lot more. So we want it as even as possible. So we try to keep them perfect 90 degree right from the servo to the horn. And now I am using a different kind of hardware that what's included in the kit to hold it onto the horn. They recommend in the, in the manual that you do a Z-bend, which is basically a double bend, so it, the wire will bend down through the horn and over. That's kind of tricky because if you don't get the bend just in the right spot, your, your rod is the long length. And so I go ahead and use these easy keepers. They're sold under many different brand names, you can really go to your local hobby store and probably find a few different kinds. All you got to know is that there's a nice set screw on top. The rod runs right through it. You can loosen that set screw, adjust your rod perfectly, and then tighten it down. So I have my, my rod already adjusted. My, horn, my servos are 90 degrees, and my tail is perfectly straight. Well, my rudder is a little off now that I bumped it, but as straight as you can get it. And the reason we're doing this is because we want all this set up mechanically to be as close as possible to how we want it to fly before we go into the radio and adjust everything. So I've got it all at 90s like I want it. That's good in terms of the push rods. You can see where I've placed the receiver. This is the speed controller here. And then I bolted on the motor to the front. Now, depending on what battery you use, the layout you have, you may run these a little bit differently. My battery is going to be strapped up to the front here. If you're using a, a much heavier pack, it might be back here a little bit. Depends on the center of gravity. So that's the beauty of this whole stick design is it can be, all these can slide around. You kind of adjust the center of gravity pretty easily. And you got a ton of options on how you want to mount all the electronics. I've done it this way to give you a reference point. This is how I've done it. Again, yours may be slightly different than this. Now that we know we have everything on mechanically, we're going to go ahead and program the radio. Now I have taken the liberty when I was installing the servos to digitally center them. So I turned on the radio ahead of time, I plugged in the servos, I made sure everything on the radio is zeroed out so I know that when I go ahead and turn this on, 
these arms aren't going to go move like this. So I turned it on ahead of time to know that this is where it's going to be when the radio's on. I can set it up as close as I as close as I can get to perfect before I go ahead and program the radio. So that's all there is to it. Uh, running a few more details by you guys. The motor. This is a standard E-Flight 400 Outrunner motor. I'm running a prop saver, as you can see. The prop is held on by rubber bands, so it can flex in a hard hit if you know it's in hard enough. The rubber rubber bands allow the prop to flex off of the shaft like that. It's more of a motor saver than a prop saver, but that's a big deal. You don't want to bend your motor shaft. Other than that, everything is basically stock as it came in the kit. So now we can go ahead and program our radio. I'm going to do that in a separate video for you guys. That one will be just for programming this specific model, but these, as these things go, it may apply to a lot more planes. All these little tips and tricks can be used in many different types of aircraft. So if you've got a different type of plane, feel free to listen, watch along. If you have any questions, just comment down below or check out our website while you're at it, rcnightmare.com. We're going to have a lot of cool extra tutorial videos on there for you guys real soon. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you soon.